Okay, g'day guys, Mr. Dundon here from Anytime Education and we've got a video today about genetic engineering and more specifically about extraction. So let's get stuck in. Okay, what's the first thing that you think of when you think of genetic engineering? The first thing that pops into my mind is elephants love rotten tomatoes. Now what is that all about you say? Well, when I'm teaching my students about genetic engineering, I like to really structure their, um, their thinking and their understanding. So I get them to remember elephants love rotten tomatoes and that stands for extract, locate, restrict, and then transfer. Because you can't really do any of these remaining three, you can't do these three until you've taken care of the extraction. And then we can locate, restrict, and then transfer. And all this relates to the genetic information in a cell. So today's uh, video is gonna be about the extraction process. So, what is genetic engineering and why do we do it and what's it all about? Well, genetic engineering is actually a, a few different things. Um, genetic engineering is sort of like a, a, an umbrella for a few different terms, but you might need to be able to identify a body. Now, the best way to identify a body is through the person's DNA because that DNA is specific to them. We might need to look at genetic testing. Who is the father? Good on you, Jerry. So paternity tests, um, genetic screening for genetic disorders in an infant or an embryo, and then finally, forensic analysis. Okay, all of these processes, or all of these types of situations require DNA. And in order for us to be able to look at DNA and use DNA, we have to have DNA by itself. Okay, there's one final other thing that we use DNA for in genetic engineering, and that's to take one species DNA and transfer it into another organism. Now, if we're transferring one gene into another organism or DNA into another organism, we're gonna be taking a trait from one organism and putting it into another one. So that might be very helpful for things like um, growing uh, wheat or corn you might have one particular variety of um, the wheat that is a bit more drought tolerant, uh, maybe uh, grows for longer periods of the year, it might be a bit more disease resistant. We can take those genes and then place them into other plant um, organisms or other varieties of that wheat, and then we get those traits now in a new plant. So it's very exciting technology. But today we're gonna to be looking at how do we actually get that DNA to start with. Well, why is that such an issue? Well, it's a big issue because if we look at the way that DNA is organized in a cell, we have some obstacles to take care of. One, we've got a cell and we've got all the cellular components that come with a cell. You know, we've got mitochondria, we've got the uh, Golgi apparatus, we've got an endoplasmic reticulum, we may have chloroplasts in there if it's a plant cell, and all of these different things are gonna be inside a cell. But we don't want any of those. The only thing that we're interested in is the DNA material. So we have to be able to separate the DNA um, from all of those other cellular components. And that's what this uh, lesson today is all about. Now, if you're a little bit unsure about DNA and genes and chromosomes, I recommend you checking out one of our other videos from Anytime Education, which is in the description below. Okay, so we want to go, we want to get rid of all these cellular components and just leave our DNA because it's our DNA that holds the sequence that we're interested in. Whether it's to determine who's the killer, um, who's the victim, whether it's to determine who's the daddy, because remember we pass on our genetic information to our children or whether it's, um, does our um, embryo have a genetic disorder? Or is it in a horrible accident? 
and unfortunately we don't have all the pieces of each individual body so it's very hard to recognize they may be burnt disfigured in some way then we want to know the DNA sequence because that's going to be unique to each individual okay so step one let me just organize myself so basically these are our four steps we want to collect our cells we want to burst cells open okay because we only want what's really in the in the in the nucleus we want to separate the DNA from proteins and other cellular components and then we want to isolate our concentrated DNA and then we can do whatever we like with it so we're just focusing on getting the DNA and then the other uh, three videos in this series will be looking at then what can we do with that DNA so let's look at step one well basically step one involves getting some sample of cells now while I'm talking to you I'm actually probably spitting out cells as we speak thousands of cells will be landing on my paper you could come along and do a swab and then you've got some of my cells but what's probably more likely is we would get maybe a buccal swab we would swab inside the mouth and then we've got cells now on that buccal swab now buccal swab is basically like a uh, an earbud type scraper thingamajig um, but it's a little bit larger we could also collect fluid from a crime scene we could take blood um, semen anything really that's going to have cells from that individual and then we can do this process but we're going to stick to taking a buccal swab to cheek cells because this is something that you could probably try at home if you like buccal swab bit of a rub on the cheek cells not too vigorously don't want to injure ourselves and then we've got DNA on our buccal swab okay very simple we're then going to take our buccal swab and we're going to place it inside an Eppendorf tube so we're going to just cut off the end and we're going to put it in our Eppendorf tube now it's very important as we deal with DNA that we don't contaminate the DNA because that's going to um, reduce the validity of the information that we get for say our crime scene um, maybe we're mixing victim and um, victim and the the perpetrator's blood or what would be even worse as a scientist if you put a bit of your own DNA in with um, the victim's blood and then suddenly you're a suspect we wouldn't want that so very carefully we don't want to mix any DNA so we place our cotton swab inside the Eppendorf tube and then we're going to add in some um, solution of different material we're going to add in detergent now what the detergent does the detergent will break down the cellular components why is that well the membrane components of our cell are made of lipids and the detergent is going to separate those lipids and then they're going to fall apart which is going to expose both the inner contents of the cell but remember our nucleus is also made of lipids as well so that's going to break apart so in our solution goes um, some detergent as well as a protease called protein a, proteinase K which is basically a protein enzyme that actually breaks down other proteins so pretty cool so we add both of those into our Eppendorf tube you can see the size of our Eppendorf tube um, based on the picture of that hand and then we use basically a micro pipette to transfer our, transfer our solutions that micro pipette is like a normal pipette except it um, you basically can have real control real fine control over the volume okay so basically what we're trying to do is lyse the cell so make it burst open so once we've put all that material in we give it a bit of a shake and sometimes we put it in some hot water to just, um, speed up that process and those cells will lyse exposing our DNA material okay In step three, we want to separate the DNA from the proteins and other cellular components. So once we added the detergent and protease enzymes, everything's all being basically chewed up and it's all into different parts, but it's still all mixed together. So what we've got to do now is we're going to add a concentrated salt solution into our Eppendorf tube as well. We're going to close the lid and we're going to put it in a centrifuge and that's going to spin it around and around extremely fast imagine the gravitron on steroids so it's spinning really really fast and by the end of it we get 
all our solid materials, so our lipids, our proteins, our other cellular components forming a pellet, and the rest of our DNA is still in solution. Okay, and that's excellent. So all we do then is we just separate the solution from the pellet and discard the pellet because we don't need that. Very simple. In step four, we're now going to um, start with a fresh Eppendorf tube and we're going to add our DNA solution from our previous from our previous um, step. So we're going to take that solution and we're going to add it into our Eppendorf tube and then we're going to mix that with some isopropyl alcohol. And that uh, isopropyl alcohol is then going to um, basically stop that isopropyl alcohol is going to stop um, the DNA from dissolving and so it's going to clump together. And if it starts clumping together, if it's going to start clumping together, so the isopropyl alcohol when added to our DNA solution stops our DNA from um, basically staying in solution. It basically makes it um, clump together. So once it starts clumping together, you give it a bit of a, um, a back and forth and you can already start to see that the DNA is clumping together. Once that happens, we then put it back into our centrifuge um, device, spin it up really uh, a lot, spin it up, spin it up, spin it up, um, run that for a few minutes, and then what we're left with is again a pellet and solution, but this time the pellet contains our DNA material and the solution can be discarded. Okay? Discard the solution, you then have pure, isolated, concentrated DNA. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Really straightforward way of extracting DNA and isolating it. It's then now able to be used for other purposes and we'll look at those in our next few videos. Thank you very much. This is Mr. Dunham from anytimeeducation.com. Please post below if you have any questions. Um, I look forward to seeing you all again. Okay.